Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and today it's time for probably a long overdue video about how to set up INAV 2.6 on your 7-inch quadcopter running INAV, of course. Bear in mind, this is not entirely new topic because while there were changes between INAV 2.5 and earlier releases and the INAV 2.6, it's not that majority of the things in INAV 2.6 are really like completely completely different. Yes, they are different to some extent, but they are not really completely different. And if you previously have set up your 7-incher with the INF 2.5, still majority of the settings apply. Together, together we will go together. Today, today we will go through the settings responsible for the best stabilization and the acro performance we, because yeah, you have to get a good stabilization and the acro performance to have good flight in the automated modes when your seven incher or a fly five incher fly scrap you with the acro mode with the regular no automated gps assisted modes it will also fly crappy with them so today today gps performance will not be our priority our priority will be to have a smooth flight without any vibrations, good stabilization, no bounce backs and other things that are that are considered a bad things on the correctly tuned multi-rotors. So, what we're gonna do? Now I will connect my Pirx 7 and we will get uh, a quick and yeah, probably it will not be that quick as I hoped, walk through through the settings responsible for good performance uh, but mostly we will concentrate on the new things not on the things that are also valid for the previous version of INAV. By the way, the link to the video that covers this topic for INAV 2.5 is in the description and if you want to you can just take a look at it. All the important settings responsible for good flight performance in the INAV 2.6 on the multi-rotors are located in the configuration and the PID tuning tab. Let's begin with the configuration. And those are two settings, flight controller loop time and I2C speed. Let's begin with the I2C speed. It's the speed of the I2C bus that is used to communicate with your magnetometer and barometer and sometimes also other sensors. Bear in mind, if you do not plan to go with 4 kHz mode or faster and you do not have anything connected to the I2C bus, you do not basically have to change anything. However, please do remember that INAV will become, will come preset with the 400 kilohertz on the i2c and 2 kilohertz on the flight controller loop time if you are just using aina for the flippity floppy and the nice flying without the gps assisted modes you can boost it to 4 kilohertz mode always almost almost always without any problems and uh, if you also do not have the barometer and other things like that or you just disable the barometer you also might go with the 8 kilohertz mode however however this applies only when you do not have anything on the i2c or your i2c is capable of running 800 kilohertz mode how to check it just connect barometer, connect magnetometer, power everything up and switch to 800 kilohertz and reboot and reset. If the number of I2C errors is stable, not growing, that means that your I2C is fast enough and there should be no problems with running 800 kilohertz mode. I have some errors over here, but this is irrelevant uh, right now. So we oh, you cannot see it because yeah, you cannot see it. Okay, now now we are talking. You see, it's stable at 65 because I do not have the battery connected, and all the sensors are just on the red. So, if it's fine, bump I to C speed to 800 kilohertz, and then you should be able to run 4 kilohertz mode without any problems, unless you have anything on the software serial. If 
there is nothing on the software cell yard, you will be definitely fine. However, please do remember that 2 kHz mode is fine all the time, and the difference in the flight performance between 2 kHz and 4 kHz will be... Yeah, there will be a difference, but it won't be like night and day. Personally, all my uh, 7 inches and also 2 in 2 5 inches are flying on the 4 kHz mode, but if I fall back to 2 kHz, it's also not that bad at all. However, like I mentioned already, if you have magnetometer or barometer and you want to run 4 kHz, you have to have the I2C running at 800 kHz. Simple? I hope so. And now let's go to the PID tuning. NF2.6 is the first release that, and ignore the typo over here, it will be fixed in the next release, when instead of classical PID controller, we have the PID and control derivative. Control derivative inside of the INAV is the equivalent of the Betaflight Fit Forward. However, please do remember that Betaflight Fit Forward is not really a Fit Forward. It's control derivative. In together, derivative and the control derivative um, are the new representation of previously used derivative and the D term set point weight. Right now, the derivative is responsible only for the stabilization because derivative takes data only from the measurement on the gyro and it's designed to dampen any acceleration. Yes, acceleration, angular velocity changes on all the two or even three axes, while the control derivative acts only on the set point on how you set currently your stick. This is why we will not deeply cover proportional because it is like it was before. We will not cover integral because it never changed. We will only cover derivative and the control derivative. If you want to have a better resistant for changing flight conditions, stronger stabilization and uh, nicer stops and smoother starts and finishes on any movement, try increasing derivative until the moment that there will be definitely no external vibrations introduced by anything. But derivative is completely disconnected from your sticks. If you want to have a sharper response, a stronger response on the sticks, on, on your transmitter, especially when you are just moving the sticks to a new position, use control derivative. By default, uh, INAV comes with slightly higher control derivative values because this quad is rather designed for smooth flying than the rapid response. I lowered control derivative to 30. If, however, you want to have more rapid response, more rapid maneuvers for the acro style and you really do want to your quad to be super responsive in flight, you should increase the control derivative, sometimes even above values of 100. Trust me, when you will start increasing the control derivative, you will feel the difference, that there is definitely something different going on as soon as you start to move your stick. There is nothing really super important on your rates and expo. Uh, maybe besides the fact that you kind of should know how fast your quadcopter can rotate around roll pitch and rate and uh, your axis. In my case, I usually settle with on 7 inches with 700 on the roll and pitch and 600 on the yaw. And also you might want to slightly increase the roll pitch and your expo from default 70 to 75. In my opinion, it gives you slightly more precise feeling on the meat on the sticks. And then the transition to full rotation speed as you move the speak is um, more visible and actually gives, I think, slightly better flight experience at all. If you are not using GPS, or but on top of that, we are not really interested in GPS modes today, we can leave the rest on the settings on the rates and expo tab unchanged. And now we go to the more impo most important thing, which are the filters. 
First of all, by default, gyro RPM filters are off, and for the INAV 2.6, we basically say that yes, you should leave the RPM filters at off because we have something else that gives uh, also amazing results without having to have any kind of two way communication between the flight controller and the ESC. So you do not have to know the rotation speed of the motors to have amazing filtering. So leaf RPM filters are on off even if you have the ESC telemetry configured. What we are really interested on is the Unicorn filter. Unicorn filter is the INAV version of the Emu Flight uh, Kalman filter and by default it will be already on. What you might want to do when you are tuning the Unicorn filter is mainly to work with the Unicorn filter Q factor and 200 by default value of 200 which is basically the equivalent of the emu flight i think 6000 i don't know why this is 6000 gives both pretty nice response and pretty nice rejection of any kind of the noise if you feel that uh, there is nothing wrong going on and uh, you do not feel any vibrations the motors are cold and nothing wrong is happening increase the q factor to well even above 300 on clear and clean and nice builds usually above 400 some things will start go wrong and i do not recommend it however if your quad is not really beaten up you should be able to pull the q factor on the unicorn filter to at least 300 maybe even more of course we leave the matrix gyro filter on on however we should lower the mean frequency on the matrix filter on the 7 inches it will be at least 80 hertz the default value is just too high and designed rather for the 5 inches not the 7 so lower the matrix filter mean frequency to 80 and also let's lower slightly the gyro LPF cutoff frequency on the PT1 to at least 90 probably going 90-95 somewhere around 100 probably having this value above 100 will allow of too much noise to go into the gyro to the PID loop when you are just cruising um, on the cost of maybe let's say slightly not that rapid response uh, during the acro flight but we are rather concentrating today on the smooth flight so values of 95 to 90 to 100 should be spot on and we can disable or leave the stage 2 on off with the stage 2 cutoff frequency at zero why uh, because we have the unicorn filter to handle all the magic with the filtering on topic of the D-term filters, my suggestion is to leave them on PT1 and for the first uh, D-term frequency lower this to 85 to 80. Probably if you have slightly not balanced propellers or beaten motors, you might be forced to go even below the 80. Uh, and leave the stage 2 at at least 140. Probably you will be also just fine even above 140 and 150 hertz without any problems. Gyro RPM, we already covered that, leave it at off and usually there is really no need for you to touch accelerometer cutoff frequency and because INAV comes with the your LPF cutoff frequency at zero which disables this filter, leave it as off as it is and i think that we are done with filters let's go to the mechanics and in the mechanics you will be mostly done you will be mostly done leave the air mode handling type on the throttle threshold with the throttle threshold at 1000 300 item relax on however by default item relax cutoff filter is shipped at 15 hertz and we are working with something slightly bigger than that you might want to lower this thing to 10 hertz anti-gravity gain rather no need to change anything 
and then we come to the boost factor. The default values for the boost factor are slightly too high for the 7 inches. They are rather designed for the nice performance on the 5 inches. So my suggestion is to lower the deboost factor to 1.4 in case of the cruising and 1.5 race and leave it at 1.5 in case of the flippity floppy around the tree. But definitely you should lower the top deboost at acceleration from default values of, if I remember correctly, 7500 degrees per second square to something closer to 5000 degrees per second square because 7 inches are not really capable of such high acceleration as the 5 inch mini quads. And uh, I found out that my Pirx 7 works great with the de boost gyro at PM at 50 which I also think it's slightly lower value than the default value the INAF comes ship with. And that is all. And now it's time for the short summary. Yes, the Unicorn Filter, aka the Kalman Filter, or actually Kalman Filter, aka Unicorn Filter, is amazing. Yeah, it really does work and it really does not require you to have ESCs with the bidirectional D shot or ESC telemetry because honestly, RPM filters in INAF 2.6, if you want to have them, be my guest, but I discovered that my quads with the unicorn enabled fly better without any RPM filtering at all. So, but you have to check that by yourself. I will not try to force you to anything. So, thank you very much for watching and until the next one. Bye bye. Oh, by the way, I also intend to record the video about the five inches and this new class of the four inch long rangers, but this will happen in the future. Bye-bye.